We're going to be looking mostly in Matthew chapter 16 and further, but we're going to begin with a verse in uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 6. We're finishing up, say amen, the sermon series called The Faith Challenge. Now, I promise you this will not be the last sermon that I ever pray, preach on faith. There will be more, and I promise you there will be a test afterwards. Y'all good with that? As soon as we leave, there will be a test on everything that you heard preached today. Why do we talk so much about faith? Well, Hebrews 11, verse 6 kind of tells us why. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It is impossible to please God. Impossible. The only way that we can please God is that we have active faith in our life. For he who comes to God must, one, believe that He is, two, and believe that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Believe that He is, that He is God. How many of you like this? That He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But that also tells us that without faith, we will lose our belief and we will miss the blessings of knowing God. How many of you would like to have a miracle of God in your life? Say amen. How many of you would like a blessing from God? Y'all do know those are two different things, don't you? You know there's a difference between a miracle and a blessing? A miracle is what God does that He needs no cooperation whatsoever. It's just God. In Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, fulfilling the Father's will, our Lord spoke, and when the Lord spoke, the author of creation, the Spirit of God took those words and with the power of the Godhead made those words come alive. And it was. And it was good. There are things that God does that are just absolutely God because of His nature, because of who He is, what He wants to do. And it's irregardless of anything that we do. It's just God. Say amen. amen. That is a miracle. That is a miracle. But I just want you to know that most of the time, God is not looking to do a miracle. God is looking to bring a blessing. And a blessing is the power of God in the will of God. The Holy Spirit comes upon those words and brings it about. But listen now, when it's a blessing, it means that we must cooperate with Him. No cooperation, no blessing. But when we cooperate, the same power of the Holy Spirit that makes a miracle happen comes in. The Holy Spirit sees God working our life, sees us cooperating with Him, joins in the effort, and there is a blessing of God. The same power of God flows through the Holy Spirit and brings the blessing into our life. Amen? There are miracles. That's just God. And there are blessings where we have to do our part as well. That is where faith comes in. We must, one, believe that He is, that He's God, that He can. And number two, that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So as we diligently seek Him, great things can happen. Now, in James chapter, you don't need to look this up, I'm going to tell, tell it to you real quick. In James chapter, chapter 2, verse 20, it says, faith without works is dead. If it's faith, <clears throat> I apologize. I've lost my voice twice this week. God's given me good voice so far. So I'm going to water it down, y'all all right with that? I'm a Baptist, I'm going to immerse it. <clears throat> faith without works is dead. 
Faith without works is dead, but when you take faith that is real faith and you bring the word works there can literally mean, does mean, corresponding action. So as I know and as I believe and as I bring into my life the corresponding actions, God's like, I think he's there. The Holy Spirit says, I heard him. I see it. I know his heart. I know his thoughts. He's with me on this. He's joining in. He is bringing his belief to life in his light. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit brings blessing. So let me ask you again. How many of you want a miracle today? There are times that I just need a miracle. Amen. Don't you wish they sold them in a six-pack at the grocery store? How many of you would be in line? I, I need a miracle. A miracle day makes Satan go away. How many of you would like to have a blessing? I think God wants to know today how many of you want a blessing. That you first must believe that He is and that He will be there for you, to reward you, to do great and mighty things. Now, when we know he's the source, that means we believe that he is. And when we believe that he is, when we act upon it, the Holy Spirit will make it come alive. Last two weeks, we've been following Peter and Andrew and James and John, but mostly we've been focusing in on Peter because God was going to do a great work. And I want to See that go a little further. Remember the first week what we, what we found out was that Jesus came up. There was a multitude of people there, and, and he saw uh, Peter's boat there, and he said, let, let, let me get out in the boat so I can get away from the water, get away from the multitude. I'll preach the sermon. I'll, I'll use the water as my megaphone, and, and I can teach them. And he sat down in the boat, and he began to teach them great things. And then he looked over at Peter and says, now, sermon's over. Time for the invitation. Launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a catch. Now, everything in Peter's practical wisdom of understanding is, I've, I've fished all night. You're not a fisherman, I am. It's the wrong time of the day to be going into the deep parts of the water. The, water, the, the fish have gone down into the deeps where the cooler water is. I, I, I've only got a net where I can reach just up there at, at, at the top. But, but Lord, at your word, I'll go. Corresponding action. So they went out, and he let down the nets. Do you know he was grumbling? It's Pete. <laughs> I'm tired. I want to go home and eat. I'm sleepy. See my wife. And then he got the tug. Y'all ever had the tug? the very first thought that a miracle is coming. And then the more he brought the muscles to bear, the more he pulled, the bigger the blessing. Because he joined in with what Jesus' word said, God filled up his boat. They yelled for James and John. They brought their boat. They filled them both up with overflowing. Amen? Amen. Last week, we talked about when the multitudes were there again. They were trying to get away, rest. And the multitudes wouldn't let them. Jesus had compassion on them, gave them the bread of life, gave them the, the, the truth of the Word of God. He preached to them. Then at the end of the day, he said, uh, it's time for another faith checkup. There will be a test. Andrew, what are we going to do with these folks? Oh, excuse me, Philip, what are we going to do with these folks? Oh, Lord. It would take this much money. Oh, we can't feed. Send them home. Send them away. No, no, no. You give them something to eat. Don't you know they had a discussion among the disciples? Well, he's at it again. He wants us to feed them. What? Andrew says, well, there's a boy over there who's got a little lunch. Five barley loaves, five good old barley biscuits. Y'all good with that in the South? Two dried fish. (laughs) 
Jesus says, what do you have? Andrew told him, bring it to me. And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it away. How many ate? I don't think anybody over there was going, I don't know how he did that. I'm not going to eat that. If you're hungry, you'll eat from the Lord's table. And they did, and they were filled. And there were 12 baskets of the fragments that remained. God always does more. Praise God for a God who does more. Exceedingly, abundantly more. So he sends the crowd away, and he goes up and prays for them, and he sends the disciples out in a boat. And yes, he knew that the, the storm was coming, just like he knows the storm's coming in your life and in my life. But he prays for us. Are y'all, do y'all get any comfort to know that God's prays for you? I love the fact that before I woke up this morning, Jesus prayed for me. He knew I'd struggle with my voice, but yet he has prayed for me. He has made a way. Praise God for that. So when he saw them in their storm, Jesus walked, I love this, in peace. He's not fretting the storm. He's not fretting the winds. He's not fretting the waters. He is walking out the miracle because he wants to deliver a blessing. And when Peter saw him, he believed and he knew that God would reward so corresponding action. He got out of the boat. By the way, he asked first, bid me come to you. Come on. Come on. And they did. No, excuse me, not they. He did. And Peter walked out the blessing. God wants to know today, y'all listening? How many of y'all want to walk out the blessing? Get out of the boat. Quit reasoning about it. Believe that he is. And then if you trust him, if you have faith in him, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, let's take it a little further. Let's take it a little further. We can't rely on ourselves, though most of us want to rely on ourselves. Matter of fact, most of us, after we've seen the blessings of God, we want to regress back. Most of us are praying that God would do what we want him to do. But God in heaven is praying that, that we will join him in what he wants to do. So we find ourselves at this place in Jesus' life, and he's trying to get the disciples to understand that Calvary was approaching. And he began to tell them, we're going to Jerusalem, and they're going to take me, and they're going to crucify me on a cross. And I will die. And they will bury me. But don't be afraid. I'm coming back. I'll be resurrected. How many times did he tell them that? I don't know, but I know one thing. It was multiple times. Are y'all okay with multiple? Why did he have to tell them multiple times? Because they're hard-headed. Do we have any hard-headed people here today? Wouldn't it be wonderful if God just said it to us once and we said, yes, sir, I'm here for you. Wouldn't that be great? Parents, did you have to tell your children one time and they just said, oh, thank you for this benevolent uh, leadership in my life. I will do exactly what you have me to do. How many did you have to say, did you clean your room? Well, go clean your room. Two hours later, what did you say? Did you clean your room? Well, I, I, I was going in there to clean it, and I found this game that I hadn't seen in 10 years. Did you clean your room? How many times does God have to tell us before sooner or later we say, I know you're a God, I know that you're a God that rewards and blesses, so yes, I will do what you have me to do. Take your Bibles and look in Matthew 16. We're going to begin in verse number 21.
You there, say amen. Kale's there, praise God, hallelujah. Look on the screen if you're not there. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised the third day. Oh, oh, here comes Pete. Y'all ready? Peter took him aside and began to rebuke the Son of God who left heaven to be the sacrifice for his sins, who knew what he was doing, and though it would be hard, he was willing to do it. And yet Pete comes to tell him he's mistaken. Said, far be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Peter meant that. With every bit of the understanding that Peter had, with every bit of the love that he had for his Savior, he did believe, Lord, I understand that you're a little depressed. I understand that it's tough out here. I, I know the, the scribes and the Pharisees. The, I, I know the chief priest is out for you, but just understand, the rock is here for you. It's not going to happen. Hear Jesus' words. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. I guarantee you Peter's eyes got that big when they heard Jesus say that. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God. You're not mindful of the ways of God. You're not mindful of the truths of God. You're not mindful that I came here to be a blessing and you're telling me to do something that would take away the blessing for all the world. You're mindful of the things of men. That sounds like all of us, doesn't it? We don't need any training to follow the wisdom of the world. We got that down pat. Notice the word offense. You are an offense to me. That word offense means a stick of wood or a trigger that they would put in a trap so that when the animal got inside the trap, it would hit the trigger and it would be caged up. It would be caught. What he is saying to Peter at this moment is, you're following the wisdom of Satan. And you are becoming a trap to me. Now, I hope that the next 60 seconds to two, three minutes the Holy Spirit will let this come real to us. Jesus wants there to be blessings. Are y'all good with that? Satan comes with temptations. What is the goal of Satan bringing temptations? To take us away from God. To lead us into sin. To lead us into harm. To lead us into evil. To lead us into, though it may look attractive, it's a snare. It's a trigger. It's a choice. Now, in this context, what Jesus was saying to, to, to Peter is, you are bringing a temptation to me. You are bringing the temptation that I don't have to go to the cross, that I don't have to shed my blood, that I don't have to die. You are saying to me that I can go back to the glory of heaven because I am perfect and alone and, and just leave mankind to their sin and be separated from me forever. But he said to, to, to Peter, you are being a temptation to me. You're being a trap to me to keep me from doing God's will. But he knew he had to join. Jesus had to have corresponding action into his life. From a plan of God before the foundation of the world, he had to walk it out. He just told them he was going to Jerusalem, that he would die there, he would be killed. And he was saying to them, this is important. Satan wants to bring a trigger to you. He wants to bring a temptation to you to bring you away. God wants to bring a blessing to you. Which one are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the temptation and have the few seconds of pleasure or the take you down that road that won't bless? 
Y'all listen to me. It won't bless. How many of y'all have sinned the same sin a thousand times? How many of you have repented of that sin a thousand times? You really haven't repented. What you've said is, I don't want to do that again. But re repentance means a change of mind. You need to stop looking at it the way the temptation wants you to look at it and look at it the way God looks at it. Now, here is the thing. If you would understand that that temptation only leads to hurt and pain to yourself and to others, but there's a blessing from God. God the Father in heaven who loves you, who wants to pour out his riches upon you, says, if you will listen, if you will heed, if you will join me, I promise I will bless you. I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. Can we back up some verses? Look in verse 13 of Matthew 16. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, <coughs> you are the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, God's Savior. You're the Son of God sent from heaven for us. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you. Did y'all see that? Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, this rock of faith, this cornerstone of faith, I will build my church. That's us. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. They cannot win. They cannot defeat God in His faith and His blessing. Hold on, and I will give you. You want to know the blessing? I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We can open up the very doors of heaven for all that are around us. And how we believe and how we walk with God and how we trust God and how we share Christ. <laughs> One of my favorite preachers, Adrian Rogers, I heard a reel of him this week on Facebook and he said, the greatest joy in all the world is to share Jesus Christ with someone and see them accept Jesus as their Savior and Lord. And to that I say, amen. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There are some things that are tying us down. If we'll turn loose of them here, they'll never be a part of us in all of heaven. But the things where we trust God and we bind them in faith and we believe them, they will be held for all of eternity. Nothing can defeat the places of God. Y'all good with that? <clears throat> Take your Bible and let's go over to Matthew 26. They're in the upper room now. Let's go over to verse 31. Matthew 26. I love to hear the pages turn. I'm one of those preachers that just gets excited when I hear the, pre the pages turn. Bring your Bibles. Matthew 26, verse 31. By the way, I think the Lord, when you have your quiet time, I think He gets a great joy in hearing the pages turn in heaven. Oh, those are my people. They're looking at the Word again. I just love it. That was free. Verse 31. Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I've been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Uh oh, here comes Pete again. He's not thinking again. He's reacting in the flesh again. 
the human understanding is about to step up again. Peter answered in seven and said to him, Lord, even if all these others are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Well, la ti da. That sound a little prideful to you? Do you think he meant it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Man, Jesus, I don't know why you picked these others, but you did a good when you picked me. You know, they, they, may, they may forsake you, but the rock will be here for you. Can't you just hear it? Jesus said to him, verse 34, Assuredly, truly, truly, I say to you, verily, verily, I say to you, this night, this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me once, twice, three times the denier. <laughs> Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Oh, so said all the disciples. Well, let's look down to verse 39. Y'all with me there? He went a little further. They're out in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them. Say it good and loud. Y'all wake up the person beside you so that they can join us in this. He found them how? Sleeping. Sleeping. Yes, yes. I've done it in church too. Just never in my own sermon. And said to Peter, what? My Bible says, what? Exclamation part. Now that, the writers put that in there. Translators. Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is, say it, church. Weak. Are y'all weak? How many of y'all want to see a miracle today? How many of you want to participate in a blessing today? Can we say 100%? How many of y'all are weak? Can we say 100%? There's a choice here. By the way, as long as we're on this earth, we're going to be doing this. The will of God, temptation to do wrong, to follow the flesh, to follow that which is easy, to follow that which benefits us, we think it benefits us, or to choose Christ, to follow Christ, to believe Christ, to have actions in our life that follow Christ. Well, let's look in verse number 50. Matthew 26, 50. Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they laid, they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. I think he was trying to cut off his head. I think he was going after the head and that guy said, ooh, and he cut off his ear. Right? John's gospel tells us in chapter 18, verse 10, it was Peter. Once again, Peter is acting out on the flesh. Once again, Peter is acting out on what he thinks is right. I think he's trying to defend Jesus. Like Jesus needs our help. By the way, another free sermon. You never have right to do wrong. Though you may justify it in your head, though you may see your storm and you say, but you don't understand, God. I, I, no, no, no. None of us do. So you know what the Lord did? He took that ear, reached up there, and healed that servant. Do you think that would be a great gospel witness to that servant? He was a soldier of the chief priest. He was a royal soldier. He knew the word of God. He knew the one that they should be looking to. And when, they, when, when, when man strikes out in evil, Jesus still made it good. 
I think it made an impression. Can we go a little further down? Matthew 26 is a long chapter. Let's go all the way down to verse 69. Peter sat outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all. That's one. Saying, I do not know what you are saying. Verse 71. When he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, he denied it. That's two. This time he did it with an oath. I do not know the man. Verse 73. A little later, those who stood by came and came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. And he began to curse and swear. It doesn't tell us what he said, and I'm grateful that it doesn't. Can I, can I tell you that we all know what he's saying here? Curse and swear. He's adding a little extra mustard to it to let these people know that he has nothing to do with Jesus. Immediately a rooster crowed and Peter remembered the words of Jesus who had said to him, before the rooster crows, you shall deny me once, twice, three times. So he that is Peter went out and wept. What's the word? Bitterly. I'm not talking just an eye, a, 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 a tear flowing from the eye. I'm not even talking about the place where he goes. <laughs> I'm talking about the floodgates. I'm talking about crying so hard he can't catch his breath. I'm talking about his body is shaking. Have you ever cried so, so emphatically that your body is shaking? You're pouring it out. Oh, God, why did I? Jesus, I loved you. You called me the rock. And yet, Cursing came from my tongue. When temptation is there and we give in, evil comes. But praise God for not just the grace, praise God for the mercy of God that reaches us at our lowest place and catches us there. Don't you know Peter had to remember going down in the water because he was looking around? And he, the, the, the flesh took over, and he said, save me. And Jesus reached down and grabbed him and brought him up. How many of y'all have had to yell, save me? And how many of you found Jesus faithful to find you there and pull you close? And when the arms of love are wrapped around us, all the tenseness, all the cursing flows away. And peace, all oh, the blessings of peace, the love, the joy, the kindness, the goodness, come on, the self-control comes flowing in. Oh, that's a great place to be. Safe in the arms of God. Before you get too mad at Peter, how many of y'all failed? This is the same preacher who on the day of Pentecost, when there was confusion and the Holy Spirit was leading them. By the way, come on. See if this meets the definition of blessing. The Holy Spirit was there and came upon them and gave them an ability to speak so that other people could hear the good news of Christ in their own language. And they went out and cooperated with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak to others, not about the weather, 
It's Pentecost, the first fruits. They're not talking about the, the price of grain and, and where you can get the best deal. They're speaking to them of the glories of God. The blessings of the, the Christ who came to be our Messiah, our Lord, our sovereign Savior forever. And as they were empowered by the Holy Spirit and cooperated with the Holy Spirit, blessings. If somebody else wants to come up and say, hey, these, these people are drunk. And Peter spoke up and preached one of the most powerful sermons. By the way, it was not the eloquence of Peter. No, no. It wasn't that special sauce that Peter had. No, no. It was the Holy Spirit as the special sauce. By the way, is that not the same special sauce that all of us have as Christians? When God calls us into this blessing where we co cooperate with Him and God uses us and the Holy Spirit makes those words come alive and 3,000 souls got saved and baptized. Oh, what God can do through a cursing preacher named Peter. If he can use a backslidden fisherman, you think he can use us? If he can use someone who, who, who was so easily pushed to, to walk out in the flesh and do things his way, you think he could use us? You think that the Holy Spirit is saying, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And by faith, Peter preached and God showed up and blessed. As a matter of fact, can I, can I say this? I'm going to. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, in this moment when the Holy Spirit begins to call you to Himself, preacher, how do I know? You'll know. I can speak to ears, but only the Lord can speak to hearts. Satan will come in to get your mind off of it. He'll, he'll try to distract you. He'll tell you, you don't need to do that. He'll give you 50 reasons why you don't need to trust Jesus as your Savior and Lord. I'm telling you, at that moment, it's a temptation to move away from God. But if you will believe that He is, and if you believe that He died on the cross for you, and that He was buried, but He also was risen from the grave by the power of life, the power of God, and that He promises if you'll let Him, He will come into you and save your soul. And He will reward you with heaven forever <coughs> and life evermore down here. He will never leave you or forsake you. He is Emmanuel. He will be with you. He will be your strength. He will be the love. He will be the greatest blessing of all this world could ever have. But you're going to have to act on it. By faith, for by grace are we saved through, come on, not of works, lest any man should boast. But if you are so willing to believe and receive, He'll do for you what He did for me. Someone said, Preacher, when you got saved, you got a good dose of it. I got a great dose of a great God. And everybody who bows their heart before God and prays that prayer gets the exact same gift I got. I just got a bigger mouth than you do. Oh, what God can do. But hear, heed these words if you say no to God, you're refusing the blessing. And you're missing the opportunity to know Him. And you may not ever 
get to know him and be with him throughout all of eternity. Your choice. But there's consequences to our choice. 